this is our culprit. See corroded pins here? This is why the SSD reflowing doesn't work. And this is why the reballing in this case wouldn't work either. Hello friends, welcome back to the bench. Our patient today is Surface Pro 5 with very common issue, which is no SSD detected. Now, we do know that reflowing doesn't help. We tested it on two devices. This is one of those two. It, it was recommended to me to basically reball the chip. And on top of that, I've seen in um, a repair shop also fixing it. Uh, I don't know if it was real or not. The, the, it looked legit. Um, but basically the guy took off the chip, rebolted, it, put it back, and the SSD was detected. I would say it's rather unlikely, but there's only one way to find out. And I finally received my stencil all the way from China. It took a little while. That's why the project was waiting a little bit. Now, to successfully rebolt it, Two things, actually even more. But let's start with this. So the chip needs to be clean and the board needs to be clean. As you can see, uh, four pads over here flew off or even five. And two over here or one. Uh, these are all in C, so it's not a big issue. It should still work if reballing indeed will help. Um, but we also have another subject, exact same, where I only did the reflow and it didn't help. Uh, so I'll try on that one as well. And the chip orientation, uh, there's this one pin over here and it needs to match this one, right? It's only one pin asymmetrical. And you can see that on the stencil as well. Here's that pin. Right, so reballing, it's probably my least favorite thing to do and uh, because there's always something is going to go wrong and sometimes it takes, uh, it takes a while. So, could be that this is just basically plainly not going to work because the chip itself has been damaged during removal. Could be uh, one way to find out. And it moved, of course it moved. There are better tools for this than I'm using. But, you know, you got what you got. Uh, this stencil is a pretty thick one, so it's a direct heat stencil. Uh, which means, um, oh, okay, now I see. It look, oh, that's why, okay. Never mind, there was a little speck over here. This, yeah, this looks good now. Uh, so, direct heat stencil allows you to use this other paste, which I'm going to use. So there are a few ways you can do it. You can use the solder balls. I'm not sure what size this is. I have 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0.3. And that's one way to do it, but it's a little messy. The other way to do it is to use solder paste. And I use this tool. Uh, the guy in the video was using like literally like a little knife, like tiny, tiny knife. It it looked brutal when he was working with that. <laughs> it's like I was thinking, like, why why are you doing this to yourself? <laughs> that uh, repair shop was in India, and they can be very resourceful. Indeed, I like to watch some of these, not only in electronics, but like all kinds of repairs that they do, like um, fixing an old radi radiator or rebuilding an engine or uh, rebuilding uh, car batteries. Amazing stuff. 
and they use, they use primitive tools and get the job done. So this is the joy of reballing. The stencil uh, warped and this is what happened. Uh, also, I forgot to put flux on it. That would help. So let's try that again.
Alrighty, after multiple attempts of reballing this, um, I finally managed to reball it properly. But the main reason why it is very hard to do with hot air is because we start heating the stencil. So the stencil is going to ha become hot first. The solder is going to liquefy on the stencil and then the chip is going to get hot. If the chip is not hot enough, the solder is not going to flow towards the chip, it's just going to flow around the stencil. So the stencil would have to be tight on the chip, very flush tightly on the, on the chip. I don't have proper tool to make that happen. So I, I had a little bit more success when I would just press on the stencil um, and then flow, uh, then use the hot air. That is a little bit more successful, but still not fully successful. So uh, the first full success that I managed to achieve was heating the chip. So basically heating from the bottom. Put the uh, uh, solder paste on it, put it on the heater and wait for it to, to just liquefy. That works a lot better. It wasn't a full success because I um, had to uh, remove the stencil, clean the chip, and there were like two or three balls missing. But it was pretty easy to put the stencil back on and then just replace those two or three missing balls and heat it up again. But will that work? I don't think so, because I think I found the main reason why this problem appears. So this is the bottom of the chip. And now, as you can see, it does not rebolt properly, right? Some balls are bigger, like this one. Uh, these two are touching, these two are touching, right? And why did that happen? That happened because I was curious what's going to happen if I remove the stencil while the chip is hot. And you know what happened? It revealed that this chip is a sandwich. These are two chips soldered together. Did you know that? I didn't know that. <laughs> but take a look at this. This is our culprit. See corroded pins here? This is why the SSD reflowing doesn't work. And this is why the reballing in this case wouldn't work either. I'm not sure if all of these are actually connected. They might not be, but we don't have a, um, you know, we have board view for this side. So I can assess which pins are connected, which are not. But here I don't have the view. I don't have the schematic, I don't have the, the board view for this chip, right? But this is what causes our issue. And this is probably what causes issue on all the other Surface Pro 5s that have faulty SSDs. So this was, I actually received uh, plenty of questions after my first and second video on this subject, because it appears to be a very common problem. And what we do know is that if you replace the SSD, like literally replace the chip, uh, it helps. It, the, the SSD is visible. So it's not the board issue, and most likely it is not the corroded pins on the board. It's the corroded pins on the chip itself. In this case, quite a few over here. So I think that solves our mystery. I'm not sure if this is recoverable, meaning how, how do you even rebuild this, right? I have no idea if, um, I mean, I could probably look for a some stencil that would be, um, that would fit here. No, this is definitely not it. Um, I don't think, I don't think they make stencils for that. But this is our mystery. So I think, I do believe we, 
I can't confirm it just yet, but I do believe that we fi finally found the reason for those SSD failing. So I think our mystery is solved. I do have to think about it and I will do some testing of camera and see what I can do with this. I'll try to clean this, um, make sure the, the pins, the corroded pins are clean and I'll probably try to uh, re reassemble the sandwich then reball it again and then put it back on the board at this point there's so many possibilities of, of failure over here that it's not going to give us a definitive answer but we can definitely see corroded pins corroded pads over here so I think I think our mystery is indeed solved. I think there were also some, yeah, like here. I think this pin is also not good. <laughs> um, so it might be on both sides, but only one of these. So I think this is the actual memory and this is the controller or the other way around because this one's farther away from the board so probably this is the actual memory and this yeah and this would be the controller in between the board and the memory i would expect not sure though but i would expect that would be the case in either case this is what probably what's gonna solve the problem. I have one more Surface Pro 5 on which I only attempted the reflow, which obviously didn't help. So I will try on it the proper reballing, then put it back on, see if it helps. Probably not. If not, then I'm gonna open the sandwich and check the pins inside. And it will likely reveal corroded pins, corroded pads. Well, sometimes it takes time <laughs> to, to find the culprit, but I think we finally found the reason. Alrighty, gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next one.